This is an overview of the ITG Center Project Performance Metrics. I'm Margaret Miller. In this video, we'll continue analyzing the metrics for the Dream Institute Tracking App Project, and we'll look at some tips to keep in mind when viewing the metrics. And finally, we'll follow Jane Redding as she considers what corrective actions to take to get her project back on track. In previous videos, we have defined the 13 project performance metrics available in ITG Center. We saw that there are four core metrics that are pulled directly from data in ITG Center. The remaining nine metrics are calculated from the core metrics, seven of which provide information about the current state of the project, and two that forecast the future state of the project at its conclusion. These 13 metrics provide project managers with valuable information about the performance of their projects. There are a couple useful tips to keep in mind when viewing your metrics in ITG Center. It is important to consider the metrics as of time period preference in the portlet and to update the time period as needed to view current metrics. It's important to consider the big picture when viewing the metrics and avoid zeroing in on any one metric to the exclusion of others. As we have seen, one metric may look just fine, while another one could indicate a possible problem. Also, it can be very helpful in spotting trends in the metrics to view week-over-week -week comparisons. This is easy to do in ITG Center by adding several instances of the metrics portlet to a dashboard page, and then setting each portlet to a different metrics as of time period date. However, remember to add no more than a total of five portlets to any dashboard page. So let's check in with the Dream Institute Tracking App Project and see what's happening with their metrics. The Dream Institute Tracking App Project has now completed its fourth month. We can see that several of the earn-burn ratios are below one, indicating that it's taking longer to accomplish the work than was planned. Let's look at the build activity. The earn-burn ratio is fairly low. If we look at actuals versus plan to date, we see that only half the time that was expected has been spent. In addition, we see that earned is lower than actual, which indicates that for the time spent, they've not accomplished as much as, ex as was expected. The negative budget variance also indicates that they're not accomplishing as much as they had expected. If we look at the percent complete and the planned percent complete, we see quite a disparity they are way behind where they had planned to be by this point in the project. Actuals minus plan to date indicate that in terms of participation, they are 20 days behind where they had planned to be. Earn minus plan to date indicates that in terms of scheduled work completion, they are almost 26 days behind where they had planned to be. Continuing on, if we look at the ETC, we can see that the estimated remaining effort for this activity is 50. 50 is what was budgeted, and our estimate at completion is 70. Variance at completion indicates that unless corrective actions are taken, we are likely to overshoot our budget by 20 days. Jane Redding, the project manager, has been informed that a team member who has been out will now be taking an unexpected family leave. Jane needs to decide the best course of action to take to get her project back on track. Are there additional resources available that could step in for the absent team member? Can the timeline for the project be extended to accommodate the delays? What about the scope of the project? Are there any areas where things can be moved out of scope, deferred, or reduced in scope, especially if the project due dates cannot be moved? Jane has considered her options 
and she has requested and received additional resources to get the project back on track. Let's do a final check-in with the Dream Institute Tracking App Project. Five months have now been completed, and with the help of additional resources, the project seems to have gotten back on track. The earn-burn ratios looked in, look improved from previous months, and if we look at the build activity, we can see that things seem to have gotten back on track. Reviewing the estimate at completion and the variance at completion, it appears that the project will still come in somewhat over budget, but the worst-case scenario that had previously been reflected in the higher ETCs has been avoided. By taking corrective actions early, Jane Redding was able to effectively manage the overall work effort and the project schedule. This is the end of Lesson 5, the sixth video in the ITG Center Project Performance Metrics Training. I hope you have found this tutorial to be helpful. We appreciate your feedback and ask you to complete a short survey available in the column to the right of this video. As I've mentioned before, quick reference guides are provided for the project performance metrics and are also available in the column to the right of this video. Finally, if you need assistance with the metrics portlet in ITG Center, or if you need help in interpreting your project metrics, be sure to open a ticket by contacting the OneHelp helpline and someone will be in touch with you to answer your questions.